Hi everyone, my name is PJ and I'm the founder of Uscreen and I've worked with over a thousand fitness brands, health clubs, studios, gyms to stream and sell videos online. We are an all-in-one solution for the whole streaming system and we have over 1,500 health and wellness customers on our platform. Today, I wanna to share with you some tips on how they've succeeded on our platform and some of the common use cases that I've seen and uh, some tips and tricks. So let's dive in and look at my screen. This is uscreen.tv. That's our company. Be sure to check it out. Check us out. Hit the contact page. You can also email me directly at pj at uscreen.tv. Let's go over to Hum and Puppy, an Australian-based company. And the first tip I want to give you is, first, this is all out of the box, super easy to build, no programming required. You upload all the videos. We really focus on an awesome customer experience. We have some really cool features. The first tip I wanna tell you is they've done a really good job organizing categories as you've seen here with this Netflix look catalog, which is default. You can also set filters. So using filters is my first tip. Very important to organize content by length, location, for example, or complexity. And I'll show you some more examples. And another tip is offering a free class or free content so you can demo the content here, right? So I can go here and gain access to that content really well within a free experience, okay? Without having to register or they might collect my email address. Let's take a look at Tint Yoga. They have some welcome videos here that give you a tour of the platform as well as the apps because Uscreen helps you launch apps. And they do a really good job by organizing content top 10. If you go to this first video here, you'll notice that without me being signed in, the first video is free, right? And then the rest has a lock. So again, just giving a little bit of content away goes a long way for the consumer, the member, the viewer to gain some trust with your service, okay? You can also require the login and for them to register before you give free access. But most of our customers do really well by just giving away free videos for free so they can watch right away. This way they build trust rather than having to go through the whole registration process, okay? Let's go back. I wanna show you more about live streaming. Here's another tip I have for you. Live streaming is built into the system. Let's go to Soul Flow here. You see upcoming live streams. I'm gonna pre-register and the countdown starts here is already started and I get a notification when it goes live. My tip for you is two different items. One is during the workout, you're not gonna enable live chat, but live chat goes a long way once the workout is done, you enable the live chat. So you can have tea time, for example, with yoga, or the instructor can enjoy a few moments with the instructors and get feedback. So live streaming chat once the workout is over for uh, some fun chat time with your viewers and members. This platform does enable you to add a lot of your members for free if you wish manually as well. And you can do that in the back end. All right, so another thing that's very common with live streaming is if I click get access now, you'll notice that live streaming is included in the subscription, 80% of the 1,500 fitness customers on Uscreen, all of these health and wellness customers, right, sell subscriptions. So that's a very common paywall and it's completely built into the platform. So they include live into their on-demand following. Now you could make on-demand an upsell, but you want a more engaged audience and make sure you're offering a lot of value for live there as well. Last but not least tip for you is a challenge. Doing some type of challenge. For example, if you're doing yoga, you can do a 10 day yoga challenge or a seven day handstand challenge. What you then do is offer the challenge for free, let them register, gain access to the full 10 days. This is all on the Uscreen platform. They've organized a 10 day challenge with this famous yoga instructor. Her name is Chelsea Kors. You come in, you gain access to every single day, which it releases day by day. So you can't go ahead. You show up every day. It's free. But then what's happening is every day I see all the other content, which I need to buy. But the challenge is free. 
Once the challenge ends, they get emails to subscribe. So now they've experienced the platform for free, but they've been teased with all this other content that you need to subscribe for, which is huge, right? So in this case, let's take a look at their library and I'm gonna go to one of their videos and I can subscribe to this content to gain access, all right? Same with here. So they also do some uh, challenges as well. So challenges are huge, get the users in. Here's a seven day vinyasa challenge. They get the users in, you requires registration here, and then uh, they experience the platform. As you see, they give away a small trailer and a small preview of the challenge away here as well. We have this really cool picture in picture that you can watch on the desktop as well. Some really cool features, Chromecast, AirPlay built in. This full platform is all in one. Contact me, PJ, at uscreen.tv. Don't forget, uh, the setup of this platform is completely code free. It's beautiful. We do a lot of improvements. We even have a roadmap and you can manage the complete system within this uh, series. And we have a bunch of marketing tools, site tools, analytics, live streaming on demand built in. And you can get your own apps on iOS, Android. We even have an Apple watch right here. Integration. Contact me if you have any questions. I'll look forward to seeing you on the panel, everybody. Thank you and have a great day. Welcome to the Health, Fitness, and Wellness Week organized by the Fit Summit. Today, we are joined together in this esteemed panel talking about how will tomorrow's club serve tomorrow's members. This is such an important topic as we move beyond this pandemic to serve our clients, members, and industry better. Today's speakers include some of the biggest giant brands in the industry, Absolute Group, Electric Studio, Uscreen, ClassPass, and Core Health and Fitness. I know some of us watching will be already very familiar with few speakers. Nevertheless, could each of you please introduce yourself and your brand in one minute? So for now, let's start with Sam. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is PJ, and I'm the founder of Uscreen Physically. I am located in Washington, D.C., and I enjoy fitness, I love being active, and uh, better than that, I get to work with all types of health clubs, gyms, studios, online fitness influencers, at a company I created over seven years ago, it's called Uscreen, uscreen.tv, and we empower all types of health and wellness professionals, studios and gyms to stream and sell their videos online, uh, for on-demand and live streaming content. So uh, I, ha I have a lot of tips and tricks that I can tell you about and all the things that I've personally learned working with over a thousand different uh, businesses. So uh, I'm really excited to be a part of this panel and excited for um, all the good things to come for our industry in the upcoming future. Thank you so much, PJ, for that short and sharp answer about you and your company. We are very much looking forward to in the rest of the panel to hear more on all your insights. Now let's move on to Sam. Hi, Sam. How have you been? 
Very well, thank you. My name is Sam Kahneman. I'm the Managing Director of ClassPass Asia Pacific, overseeing the 10 different countries that ClassPass operates in, in APAC, splitting my time between Singapore and Sydney at the moment. For those of you who don't know ClassPass, we are the world's biggest fitness and wellness subscription. So it's an app and a website that allows our users in 30 countries to access at the moment, we're up to more than 40,000 venues across the world. So it's everything from your yoga studio to your hit, to your massage, to your facial, to some, some hotels, which I know you particularly enjoy, Sarah. So an app, you get access to, to all of these locations using an internal currency that we built called Credits. And your credit price is going to be surged up or down based on the direct pricing of that listing and the supply and demand. So you might see Grab or Uber surging prices up or down. Class Plus, that's the same thing with your credit. So excited to be on the panel and hopefully can share some interesting insights. Thank you, Sam. Big fan of Taskbars and big fan of what you do in the Asia Pacific region and in the world. Uh, thank you so much for the short introduction. We'll be looking forward to hear more on your insights with the rest of the panel. Now let's move on to Christina. Hi, Christina. How's things going? Hi, Sarah. Things are going well. <laughs> I am the CEO and co-founder of Electric Studio. For those who don't know us, we are based in the Philippines. We are the first and largest indoor cycling studio in the country. Since the pandemic hit, we have had to also expand our offering. So we now offer Electric Studio rhythm boxing, strength training, hit, flow, and core. Um, we also locally have the largest live and on-demand platform. So we push out over 200 plus new classes every single month. And our on-demand platform has grown to over 250 classes there. So we're super excited um, with our push to digital. And I'm excited to share uh, more about that in this session. Thank you, Christina. One of the biggest brands, um, Electric Studio in the Philippines. Very proud of the work that you do for the region and for APEC as well. Moving on, last but not least, Frank. How's things going out there, Frank? Hi, Sarah. Thank you for having me. Yes, I'm, I'm Frank O'Rourke with Core Health and Fitness. We have uh, five uh, commercial equipment brands. Uh, that's Stairmaster, Star Trek, Nautilus, Schwinn, and our most recent acquisition brand is Throwdown, which was one of our functional uh, training uh, entries into, uh, into our portfolio of brands. I am uh, currently based in the U.S., uh, spent the last couple of years in Singapore and Asia, which was just fantastic. But we've, uh, we've relocated here back to, uh, to the U.S. And uh, I currently oversee sales for Asia, for Middle East, and for Latin America. And thank you for having me on the panel. Thank you, Frank, for the short and short answer. Congratulations on the recent acquisition. I'm very excited to hear about it, the rest of the panel, as the panel goes through. Now, let's move on to the first question, which I would love for everyone to answer. But with the, uh, with the time that we need to look at, I would like you guys to summarize this in few sentences. So I'm going to start off with Sam. So Sam, can you please tell us what major changes has your business undergone through this pandemic? In few sentences, please. I love it, Terry. Trying to curtail everybody's answers. We we couldn't have had a larger suite of change in the class pass, to be honest. So of course, our job is to merchandise excess inventory from studios and gyms and spa and beauty venues. And uh, when COVID hit, all of that got shut down. So we had revenue fall by ninety eight percent. We were forced to cut our opex in as many ways as we possibly could, and it was a a stark realization that, that revenues do not make a business sometimes so much as your cost base. So the last 12 months for us has been an exercise in consolidation to make sure that we can come out the other side of COVID as strong as possible for our studio partners so that when people can't start streaming back to in-person experiences, ClassPass can be there to help drive revenue to them. So we're going to get to that point, which is really exciting. Hopefully sooner rather than later, the whole of the world is open for business. Thank you so much, Sam. Now let's move on to Christina. Can you tell us how the last 12 months has been for you? It's been crazy. <laughs> and it's still crazy until now. So just to give background. So we are still not open. Um, in the Philippines, group classes are still not allowed. But we've definitely found the opportunities in this situation that we're in. Um, for us, it's very clear that online is going to lead the way given everything we're facing. So the first thing that was really giant for us is we had to completely overhaul our revenue model from really relying on in-studio packages to quickly transitioning that to selling bikes, renting bikes. Just this week, we started selling boxing bags, 
We've created our lifestyle brand as well. We're selling electric studio scents, um, electric um, equipment spray. So anything to bring that electric vibe and making working out at home really still feel like the studio. Uh, we've also yeah. had to become more than just a cycling studio. Really diversifying our modalities was in our three to five year plan. But this pandemic made us do it at lightning speed. And I'm so, so grateful for that. And the last thing really is organizationally, our team just had to wear completely different hats overnight. We've also had to create new teams like a productions team, post-production team, supply and logistics team. So all of these new um, tasks are completely um, new, but our whole team is just buckling down and embracing the change. So I couldn't be more happier with the team we have. Thank you, Christina. I don't know whether I heard it right, but was it electric scent that I heard from you? Because I'm very much looking forward to asking more about that later. And also pivoting to digital seems to be the phase of the year throughout the pandemic. So looking forward to hear from you. Thank you. Um, PJ, let's go. So the last 12 months have absolutely been challenging for so many different businesses. And we've had uh, a huge undertaking on our side and the privilege to help so many different businesses uh, the health and wellness industry to stream uh, their videos. We had to quickly pivot and make some changes on our side and really have an implementation priority to help so many businesses uh, stream their vid videos online. And uh, we've been able to work with big brands such as SoulCycle, Rumble Boxing, multiple different uh, brands within the Asia Pacific as well to stream their videos. Cycling is very popular as well as other hit programs and um, the on-demand and live streaming uh, really acceleration of this industry gave us the opportunity to better our services and offer an all-in-one platform that really helped uh, these companies build their online presence with an awesome experience that we really work hard to provide. So we're very grateful to be in this position to be able to work with so many businesses, but we also had the opportunity and the responsibility to do a really good job in a short amount of time to help onboard the number of customers that came to us extremely quickly. So that was a responsibility on our side. Thank you so much, PJ. Looking forward to hear how that extra responsibility came through uh, during this pandemic. Uh, last but not least, Frank, tell us what's going on. Yeah, well, similar, you know, similar to PJ, we certainly had some challenges in our business over the last 12 months as well. You know, just with the, the club and the studio closures that, that really transpired, we saw a dip in our overall commercial sales uh, and it hit our division particularly hard in Asia as Christina has been you know, referencing what's been happening in, in the Philippines. Latin America was hit extremely hard as well. You know, our, our primary lines that did do well were indoor cycling, bike sales and our light commercial cardio line. Uh, and I believe that really for all commercial equipment companies, that was really, you know, everyone was really impacted, you know, similar to, to core. Uh, our factory, now we do produce, you know, retail products for, you know, it's for country, or companies in uh, North America that are distributing those products. And so as soon as the workers were actually able to get back to work and uh, the factory was up operating, we were at full capacity within a few weeks of everyone coming back to work in, in China. Uh, we certainly saw some internal price increases as well. And this was really coming from our uh, material suppliers. And we had some increase in our ocean shipping costs that, uh, that we really took those costs on internally. And it did impact, you know, obviously, you know, our margins, but we, we absorbed those costs and did not pass those off to our customers. Thank you so much, Frank, for sharing that. It was really insightful to see. I think online retail really took a, a hit during this period. I would love to hear more about this later. Moving on to the next question, guys. Um, I would like to pose this question to Christina and Frank. Christina, you can go first. What customer trends or behaviors are you now seeing? And how are these impacting your current planning and decision making? Thanks, Sarah. So for us, and I know we're in a completely unique environment, other markets are already ready to kick COVID in the butt. 
um, we are still tackling it phase on. But I look to these other markets as really, um, you know, like a magic ball. And I know things are going to be okay and things are going to be back to normal because other markets are open. So I'm really looking forward to that. But in terms of us and our situation, um, because um, COVID is still a situation that we're currently tackling, one of the biggest trends we're seeing is now more and more people are really adapting to online. Last year, you still had a cohort of people that didn't believe in it or were really waiting for the studios to open. And because things have lasted a year, we're seeing people say, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to give this online class as a workout, uh, this online class a shot. So because of that, we're really seeing still a continuous wave of people wanting bikes from us. Um, so we've been working with Frank's team a lot. Um, we've also started offering other equipment to really make working out at home an easy choice. Um, we have continue to find ways to make owning a bike or owning equipment more affordable. So things we've really started to push out is, could we allow some of our studio credits, which we've frozen, and allow it to offset some of the cost of owning a bike? Other things we've tried is to make owning multiple bikes um, a lot more affordable. And believe it or not, our community is crazy. People don't want to share their bike at home. People want to work out together doing the same class at home. Um, we've also offered installment efforts or even ways for people to rent and own a bike. So all of these ways for us, all of these things is really essential for us because getting that piece of equipment in is there a way to really stay in the electric network and stay into our platform? The other thing we're seeing is people are consuming content communally. So I kind of touched on this a while ago is because people are stuck at home, families are stuck at home, partners are stuck at home, people are trying to find ways to do, people are trying to find things to do things together. So a lot of times, we really will see families work out together or ride together. So this for us is really fascinating. And we are trying to really capitalize on that, right? We want it to make it, we want to make it easy for people within households to work out together. So we found ways to bundle our bikes together. We allow sharing of packages because all of the these things really make electric part of their every single day routine. And the other thing we're seeing is, yes, people are working out more, but it's really funny. You, you see two types of people now here. You have people pre-pandemic who worked out a lot. And then during the pandemic, they just stopped. <laughs> and then you have this other segment of people who were working out pre-pandemic. And now they're working out every single day, doing two to three classes a day. So we're, we're seeing these two types of people. So for these people who just completely stopped working out, we're constantly trying to find ways to make it as friction-free as possible for them to join in the program. We're trying to find a way to make them really say yes. So we're doing things like launching new class types because we know some people don't have space for equipment. So we just recently launched Electric Core, which is our 30-minute all-abs class, and we're really seeing a lot of traction there. For the people who are really working out a lot more, so we are seeing some fascinating things. People are just doing like two classes back to back. People are doing, you know, a class in the morning and a class in the evening. So we love seeing how sticky our product is. And we are really trying to find ways to get those two people. So the people that are into it, we want them to stay there. People that we're still trying to get, we want it we were trying to find ways to make saying yes really be an easy choice. So those are kind of the things we're seeing in our market now. So really to kind of complement what Chris was saying for, you know, for her studios, you know, on the big box side for the big box gyms, in most markets, we've really seen a reduction in group X and we've seen an increase in one-on-one -on -one training. And that's really it's really a 180 degree turn from what the trend has been up until the pandemic. I would say that, uh, you know, certainly interest is remaining high on HIT and functional training. We're seeing a lot of turf areas going in. I've, I've attended some recent grand openings in North America, and, and you can certainly see that 
you know, the small areas of turf, it, you know, they're really dedicating a lot more space to turf, uh, half racks and, and platforms. And the platforms with, the, you know, the technology of sound, vibration and absorption for, you know, really that noise abatement when you're, you know, not necessarily on a ground floor, you just want to reduce, reduce the noise in your clubs. But that's certainly uh, what we're seeing with some trends. And I would say one of the latest trends that we're seeing right now is really all around recovery and the recovery products. And a lot of our designs that we're doing right now, we're really carving out spaces and we're kind of creating these what we'll call recovery corners that are putting some of the latest pieces in and it's certainly getting a, a share of all of the clubs going forward for, uh, for trends. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have Ben from Absolute Group joined us today. Hi, Ben. How's things? So we rent out the bike the same as, you know, all other, I guess, cycling studio around the world that they were doing. So we were lucky that we have kind of like been having a, a full team, a production team do, doing other other contents before. So we adapt them, you know, just and able to launch that quite fast. So I guess it's been a series. So now we are renting our bite again and filming again and, and doing more of a online content again. And, and also, I guess in terms of business wife, so we have adapt and launch our, what we call absolute cycle home edition, which is a home bike to purchase. And I, I think that that's what, what, that's why we are pretty much. So we'll see how it goes over the next couple of weeks in, in, in Bangkok. Thanks, Ben, for sharing what's happening in Bangkok and also what's happening in Absolute Group. I, I hear that your home edition just launched and it has been pretty successful. Congratulations on that. Um, Tim, we're moving on to the next question, actually. And I would like to pose this question to Frank. Um, Frank, where have you recently invested to improve customer experience and how are those investments playing out? Well, we have uh, we actually have a few areas, you know, first, I would say is, you know, is virtual education, you know, prior to the pandemic, we were we were probably 90 percent, you know, live education courses and about 10 percent online. And that that online was really just for people that just couldn't get to a live event. And in the second quarter of last year, we we pivoted, you know, to a, a truly virtual platform on education. And it went over, you know, very well. It just it gave us a much wider audience, obviously, with uh, with everything that was going on during the pandemic. And as as things started to open up, um, and we were able to get some of our master trainers and or teams of master trainers to go in to say a a multi club operator, we could host one live workshop, and then we could make it virtual to the other locations that would actually be in their chain. Another, uh, another one would be our customer service portal. We, we heavily invested in our portal called Core Connect. And this is basically, it's been one of our largest customer investments for tech that we've, uh, that we've made recently in the last 12 to 18 months. But it just, it allows you from a service perspective to have real-time tracking, 24 seven access. And we also create it in multiple languages, but both of those investments have really paid off for us and for our customer base. Thank you so much, Frank, for sharing that. I would like to pose the same question to PJ. Uh, PJ, where have you recently invested to improve customer experience? And how are these investments playing out for you at Uscreen? Great question, Sarah. So for us, a big movement for our customers and their requirements has been live streaming uh, due to the fact that things are really locked down in various locations. Uh, the one of the best ways to engage in uh, your community is to do live streaming. So we quickly launched live chat on our live streaming when we did so. We enable, um, uh, you can actually at the end of a class enable live chat or send a Zoom link and then have a coffee chat or a chit chat with the students and the instructors, which is a great idea. So we've invested heavily in our live streaming um, improvements in our infrastructure and features to really improve uh, the ability to do more with live in our platform, as well as uh, we've made some significant changes to uh, the way we onboard customers and offer customer success. We launched a customer success team on our side, which uh, keeps in really close touch with our customers and tells them about a lot of the different 
uh, success stories, tips and tricks that are working for similar customers in the similar industries. And that has been adopted really well. We launched that program about three months ago. So we focused heavily on onboarding, customer success, and the long-term um, ability to help our customers succeed with uh, what we offer because a lot of the different uh, health and wellness businesses that joined us, joined us in a rush and joined us in an urgent matter. So we were uh, able to pretty much take that content and uh, their use case and uh, offer the best practices for them moving forward. So uh, we're gonna continue to do that and continue to improve our platform and onboarding for the various different customers that uh, we gain and, and nurture in the short term and long term. Thank you so much, PJ, for answering that question. I think one of the common words that I keep hearing from you is onboarding. Onboarding has been so critical for you, Screen. So I'd love to hear more about that later as, as the panel moves on. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, moving on to the next question, which I would love to hear from ClassPass. You know, uh, Seb, can you share your thoughts on the future of digital fitness and wellness, like you know, live stream, on demand, content, platforms, engagement. What's been going on in that space? Absolutely. So code, as we know, I think we, we're all on the same page here that, that it has been a great accelerant, more so than a change agent. So we saw some trends around digital fitness consumption coming up with a Kayla Edsini's or a Chris Hemsworth Sensor or a Peloton pre-COVID. And then anybody who's watched Peloton share price, I mean, was lucky enough to invest in February 2020, has, uh, has seen that's kind of a good little proxy for just how much digital fitness has exploded. So there's no doubt that it's accelerated our consumption of digital fitness and that it's here to stay. Is digital fitness going to eat in-person fitness or is it going to be complementary? I think certainly the numbers we're seeing points to the fact that it's going to be complementary. So what digital fitness has done during COVID where users maybe were unsafe or felt unsafe going into the real world to work out or they had no option to go into the real world to work out, they were forced into their homes and they were forced to consume digital fitness. So it has opened up the addressable market of people who are going to consume fitness generally. So we all have an opportunity then with more people having worked out at their homes or with digital fitness offerings over COVID to kind of say to them, okay, digital fitness is one part of your routine, but can we convince you to come into class for something else that you can't quite emulate in your home? So as much as you might be working out surrounded by your friends and family at home, there is nothing quite like being in person and, and sweating surrounded by 30 other people and high-fiving and getting that, that in-person buzz from an instructor. And we know that with our workplaces diffusing their working locations as well, you're no longer going to be coming into an office five days a week as standard. We're working from home maybe two or three days a week, so the workplace is hybridised. Probably a great sort of, again, proxy for just how well that hybridization is going is the fact that WeWork is now going to IPO again with a, a nice healthy valuation. So people are seeing, okay, we need to be working from home but coming in person to connect at a WeWork in a community in a shared space. I think it's a reasonable analogy for studio fitness. We're going to be working from home, but we're actually going to be less connected to people in real life than before because we're not forced to go in an office. So our job, I think, as studio fitness operators is to convince people of the merits and to overturn the recency bias where people have forgotten just how good it is to come back into a physical location. So I see a hybrid world definitely where digital is not a replacement for in-person, but it can be complementary and it can expand the addressable market of people just interested in fitness generally and then it's our job to show them that an in-person has some special source and that the digital component has the convenience that in-person doesn't have and I think they can marry together really nicely. Completely agree with you, Sam. I think the key word here is complementary and you guys are doing a really good job in that. For me personally, when I was working out during the pandemic at home, I thought that, okay, I could actually get used to it until I stepped into the studio, also booking via class pass, and I realized how much I have missed the studio experience. So complimentary is the key moving forward. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, moving on to Ben, I'd like to ask you the same question. Now with, you know, um, Absolute Home uh, launching, and can you sh share your thoughts on the future of the digital fitness or wellness? Yes, I mean, I think, you know, just, just to make a, a point as well that I totally agree with Sam that, you know, people ask us as well this kind of question that is this digital fitness going to be replacing 
um, and in studio fitness. And I, I totally agree that, um, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that digital fitness will be a short term, but it's rather going to be, you know, I, I mean, it's going to be a short term or a long term, because obviously for some people, it can be a little bit of long term. But I also myself, you know, as I also, you know, exercise daily, I don't think that, you know, in, in the end, the experience of coming to the studio, the community, it's, it's, it's also almost as important as doing exercise, if that makes sense. So, and especially now we work from home more and more, you know, and, and I, that I feel like, you know, in terms of working from home once, companies or corporates realize that it can actually be work from home somewhat or half of the time and realize that the cost of running um, an office is actually quite expensive and all that, you know, and then I think coming out to exercise into the studio is probably going to be the only option or one of the, that not that many activities that people actually get to come out and, and enjoy it. So I think, you know, totally, I, I really think that it won't be replaced. If anything, it will just like expand the market to be a little bit more larger because we also see people who actually, you know, have experience on our home bike, you know, through either, because we also put in Singapore, we also put some of this home edition in, into corporates. And once they try a little bit in corporates, they actually come to the studio because they actually prefer a real experience at the studio as well. So it can be both ways by having the digital first and then they realize that, okay, they also wanted to experience uh, the in-studio as well. Yeah. So to answer your question in terms of our plan, um, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, like home edition has been on a card for quite some time, but, you know, without, I, I guess with the pandemic, it has pushed out, you know, much faster. And I think our plan going forward is to come, you know, can be segregated on a few things. Number one is to first, to develop the product, you know, because the product is still, it, it's functional, it's doable and people enjoy it, but obviously it is, we can always improve the experience, especially on the, on the community, you know, level, how do we, how can we interact and, and all those features that I think at the moment, given the time that we need to push it out, you know, the, what we have more concentrated more on is, is to perfect the content itself. Now the content has been, I would say very, very well adjust and people are happy. Now it's, it's the next level would be how do we interact all these home riders together and what you know, are the features that will, will, will make them tick and what's really gonna be something that they enjoy in addition to just ride themselves or with their family members. So I think that sets the next step that we're definitely going to be spending a lot of time and hopefully, and also definitely an investment in terms of both financial and also human resource on. And the next and another expansion will be on the geographic. Now that we have in Thailand, obviously, because that's where we have the studios and then also in Singapore. And we found that half of the buyers for our home edition are our members. The other half is actually non-members. What we wanted to expand more, obviously, is to be those non-members. People who, you know, I, I don't know, but I, I am pretty sure that if we look at Peloton, a lot of their membership base, actually people who can't access to the studios as well because they either don't have that in their town or it's not, you know, that close by or there are other reasons why they would prefer a home even though they've never been to the studio. So I think there's a huge market you know, both in Thailand, Singapore, and also in Asia, you know, with this kind of characteristic where either the geographic doesn't work, the timing doesn't work, because as we know, to go to the studio, you need like two to three hours. One hour in the studio, a little bit of shower, a little traveling time. Well, if you do it at home, 45 minutes, and then that's it. So I think you, you have a lot of people who geographically, they don't have studio to go to, timing it doesn't work or you know they don't feel comfortable going to the studio so that's a huge market so that's where we wanted to expand this market too so it will have to be a lot in terms of both geographic and also in terms of marketing and content and education so i think these are the things that we we will you know be focusing on quite a lot and i don't know if i mentioned but we just launched our virtual cycling class in in bangkok so it will be our, it, it's actually our test pilot in one of these very, very urban and very, you know, high, high end urban and, and young community mall called the common. 
So we launch our new studio, cycling studio, but it, there's no instructor. It's basically a big screen, a huge screen, but we have the light and sound, everything just like you go into a studio, but it just you just take class with a, with a screen. So we, yeah. So I think that that's also our new focus going forward as well in terms of studio expansion. We're seeing hybrid offerings across the market. How do you think companies can best execute and monetize on these hybrid offerings? Absolutely. The most we've seen a, a various uh, wider range of um, monetization ethics, uh, but the most popular, I would say, is for sure what. Uh, studios, health clubs do is they offer a membership, so a subscription offering for their on-demand content as well as their live stream. So they're combining both the on-demand and live stream into a membership. What also happens is oftentimes the studios or the clubs based on the membership level will also grandfather in that online uh, digital offering into uh, that membership level. So if there's two tiers, an entry level, they won't include it in the higher tier, they'll include um, the in-person will also include a digital offering. The most, and it, um, also if there is a free trial offer for anyone who's not a member that's coming in to subscribe, an average free trial is seven to nine days across the board for us and a subscription price of $9.99 to about $18 a month is the most common especially within uh, US-based Canada and Western Europe uh, countries. I do not have the stats for Asia Pacific, unfortunately. So subscription offering is the most popular. Um, oftentimes it's included with an in-person uh, membership. And then we also do see some individual classes offered for a rental pay-per-view basis for either a one-day access, one-time access, or a three-day uh, access. So that's also very popular as well. Thank you, PJ, for sharing that. Last but not least, Sam, can you please share with us a little bit about, you know, you did mention a little bit about the hybrid offerings just now earlier, but how do you think companies can best execute and monetize this hybrid offering? You can't be half into digital, in my experience, from what we've seen. So we know the digital because anyone can consume your content from anywhere in the world. It has democratized consumption, but I, I, be, I really do believe it's consolidated production, meaning it, it's not a location-based business, the digital business. So the cream is going to rise to the crop. And if you are not amongst the absolute best, you know, if, you, if you're the chaff instead of the wheat, then you're not going to get the cut through that you could be getting where an in-person business often it's very location based and even if it's not the world's best in-person experience the fact that i only live 100 meters from that studio means that it's got a kind of running start with me so you have to do it really well you have to invest very heavily and you have to make sure to ben's point before that the quality of the content is such that people are going to come back and choose you over uh, a brand that's streaming out of the us or apple fitness or peloton with their 200 million dollar content budget so be, be really clear and, and think about whether digital is necessarily a creative to your business as a cherry on top. And the other thing as well is to ask your users because it's going to be different studio to studio to studio. They might say digital for me is not going to be a defining factor in whether or not I churn out of a membership from your studio. I would prefer to see a better instructor or more lenient cancel policies or a different type of equipment or scheduling, whatever it is, you can be guided by your users. I wouldn't say you should blindly invest in digital because it's kind of the, the zeitgeist at the moment because you know there are competitors who are only doing digital with huge budgets where anyone can consume that content from anywhere in the world. So, so be strategic about it and, and employ some design thinking to understand whether your users are really going to resonate with your digital. Thank you, Sam. I think one of the biggest takeaways that you mentioned was the digital business. It's a location business. This is something that you and Ben mentioned as well. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, let's move on to the next question. And I would like to pose this question to Christina because I am looking forward to hear about that electric scent that you're talking about. Do clubs and studios need to be reimagined? Like be it design, technology, equipment, content, people, or in your case, the scent to better meet the needs of the future members? Yeah, so I mean, for us, at least in the short term or and medium, medium term, I don't see us totally putting a lot of investment in redesigning all our studios because 
you know, we're still trying to figure out, you know, what, once we open, there will be a very strict capacity requirements, but that's going to change, right? We've seen it in other markets, right? In the beginning, you'll have class sizes of 10, then it's going to become 20, then it's going to become 30. So all these things will start to ease up. So I wouldn't totally redesign our whole space um, to fit the strictest restrictions that we have. The other thing is people miss the studio. They There's that community aspect of that closeness that people want to see once you reopen the doors again. So I think for us specifically as a boutique studio, it's more about Uh, making sure we're up to date with the procedural standards that we have in place, right? There's so much you can do with your existing space and just being really smart about it. Um, And just to make sure that the flow works, right? No showering and the capacity capacity constructs that you have in place. I would really rather put that investment in putting more money into our digital experience, right? As Sam mentioned, um, you have to play that game, but if you're going to play that game, you have to play it well. For in-studio, the investments I would make are finding ways to make digital and in-studio more scalable. How do you, how do you, for example, have a class, stream that live, and record it as well as on demand, right? These are the smart decisions that we're trying to look into to be able to have in studio and um, our live component work. Something else I'm starting to see with um, our digital platform, which is really amazing, is before when we were purely in studio, uh, the moment a client goes on vacation or the moment you see a client leave um, the country and have to relocate, we're seeing all those people come back now. So as Ben mentioned, the beauty with digital is it's, it's expanded the market and we're seeing old clients come back. But as a boutique studio, nothing is ever going to p- replace that in-studio feel. Um, so we are so excited to hopefully one day reopen. But what's really amazing for us is in our digital platform, our live classes, we're, we're seeing amazing, amazing numbers. We always see like, high double digits or even triple digit growth in in all of that. So it's really amazing seeing that that means the community there is there. The community is strong. So going back to the reimagining or redesigning, honestly, short term, I'm not going to bulldoze our walls and start putting all this new tech. Um, I would more focus on, you know, what are the things we can improve in the current studio, in the current space? How can I set up my room so that I can actually record these classes and they look good on camera. So those are the things that we will be playing around with. With regards to the electric scent, I know I mentioned this briefly. (laughs) So we started selling like electric candles that have that signature smell when you open our, when you used to come into our bike room, there's that smell that we on purpose put it there. So it always reminds you of the studio so when we launched that, it sold out so fast, all these candles, because it, it's just a testament that people love the brand, people want to feel the brand, even if they're at home. We've also started selling electric studio um, equipment spray and yoga mat sprays, and people just love it. It's an easy add-on to when they're buying equipment. So all of these things for us um, really just reminds people about the studio So that when we reopen, we hope people are just going to flock in and hopefully one day we'll also forget COVID just like all these other markets that have reopened. You know, it's it's really going to be interesting to see what happens with social distancing and is it going to go away completely or is it going to stay in in some way? I know that there's there's certainly different schools of thought on what's going to happen, you know, for future studios and clubs. And, you know, I mean when the pandemic hit and then when the studios were able to reopen, you know, you were really seeing the the bikes in the indoor cycling studios be cut in half, uh, main floor cardio as well. You know, I mean, every other machine was basically made inoperable and it was really all just given by, you know, government mandates or city mandates that were put in place to determine what was happening from a social distance standpoint. Regardless, I think that in the design for future studios in those spaces, I think that you should really look to make the room as flexible as you can in those design elements. And it just to allow for easier transitions 
for future trends that we don't even know what they'll be today, but just to allow for an easy transition in the future. I also think you should look to incorporate technology for sanitation and safety. Uh, you know, antimicrobials, you know, are, are you're seeing different ones being advertised and being implemented in a lot of the clubs today and the UV light systems and having ample PPE and, and cleaning stations just spaced throughout your facility to allow people to clean the machines or clean their hands before and after the use, I think is uh, going to be very important in the future design. And, and also, I think that it's important to keep the instructors in mind. To, to minimize their fatigue, knowing that they're there teaching hours, you know, throughout the day and coaching and, and, uh, and just spending so much time that uh, anything that you can do to assist your instructors is certainly, uh, you know, good planning for the future and could actually even be used as a recruitment tool for your facility. Sam, I believe that you wanted to like share a little bit about what's happening in the clubs and studios. So tell us, tell us a little bit more. Uh, yeah, really quickly, I have a very firm view on this. So a uh, couple of things. So a lot of studios we talk to have hypotheses, I guess, about what their members want. And something that we, we see missed often is actually digging into the data and both surveying your users and crunching your attendance numbers and especially your churn numbers to understand what is really moving the needle on this and what is a member that is going to contribute a markedly higher lifetime value to your business compared to a member who's going to churn more quickly? What does a member look like who's going to refer friend after friend after friend, because we know if you get that flywheel going when you start referring and your business can go exponentially with next to no marketing costs. So digging into this, what we see time and time again, we've seen it for the whole history of class plus really is that we all need reminding that we are in a people business. And I am very firm on the fact that people, in my opinion, are going to be potentially the most important aspect to ensuring the growth of your business in a post COVID world, because we cannot forget that, you might spend millions of dollars on a fit out and you have ASOP products, you have Dyson hair dryers, but when was the last time you heard somebody refer their friend and reference the fit out? People buy people. People buy stories, not spreadsheets, and people remember the way you made them feel, not what you said necessarily. So we, we just have to have that at the core of our thinking in coming back to in-person experiences, thinking about the fact that we're going to have less connection than, than ever before because we're not going into offices. We've been marooned at home for the last two years, working out online. And the special source in coming in person to fitness is going to be, are you a member of the community? Can you have some progressive overload in your training? Can you have that high five again? Can you meet new people? Can you, I don't know, is there a potential you know, spouse in, in the class next to you? I don't know. But these are not things that people are going to be able to get from their lounge rooms. Increasingly, we're going to get them less from workplaces. And so I believe it's our biggest responsibility to prioritize what is the face-to-face -face experience that your trainers are giving, that your front desk staff are giving, that your community is giving eh, to make sure that, that people are going to stick with your business. Because I, I firmly believe that the stickiness of a Studio Fitness user is going to be directly proportionate to the amount of community they feel and the quality of the human-to-human -human interaction they feel as well. They're very, very firm on this. No technology or millions of dollar fit-outs can override the, the community feel and the people. Thank you so much, Sam, for sharing that. You know, we've come down to our final questions. And because of the time, I would like to give this opportunity to PJ, Ben and Frank to actually, um, you know, close it off with final words. Like, you know, just in two sentences, what's the next 12 months? What excites you most about the next 12 months? Uh, maybe, uh, Frank, you can go first. So we want to continue to really grow with our key account customers, you know, throughout Australasia and the Middle East. You know, we've built some really solid partnerships over the last few years, and we want to continue to just build off of that momentum. I mean, we've got, you know, great partners like, you know, like Ben and like Chris, you know, here with Absolute and Electric and, you know, some of our other, you know, great partners like Fit247 and UFC Gym and, of course, Evolution Wellness has been just a great partner the last few years that we're really looking to grow with. Additionally, we want to secure some additional financing options. You know, we've had some really positive movement as of recent uh, to secure some financing relationships on a global level. And we're really looking to develop more of those relationships to where we can help you know, not only startups, but our existing customers to finance product. So we're really excited about the future within our financing tools that we're going to have available. 
In addition, on our retail and home fitness, you know, we've got a multi-year roadmap where we're going to continue to innovate and bring products to market that do have a consumer orientation, but they'll also, they're going to really need to hit that price point that the consumers can, can afford to put into the home. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to that. We, we do expect more growth in our e-commerce platforms where we have our direct offices. So that's another area where we're investing now for the future uh, with our direct offices. As far as, you know, like personally, what I'm excited about, I'm excited about just getting on a plane again and being able to travel to see our partners, you know, throughout you know, all of these wonderful countries throughout Asia and throughout the Middle East and, and Latin America and really just looking forward to the return of the gym and those studio in club workouts and just less talk about, you know, all the different vaccines and what's available and, you know, clubs entering shutdowns and then reopening. And I do believe that there's a huge opportunity for all of the new people, the new health seekers that are looking to get more fit. And I'm super excited about that. Uh, next up, <laughs> Jay, can you please just summarize with us what excites you about the next 12 months? Absolutely. I'm a in-person uh, gym goer myself. So I'm very excited for, the industry to open back up and uh, not have to wear a mask uh, when going to the gym. So I'm really excited for things to go back to normal, travel, gyms, group classes, all that good stuff. And uh, I know we've all adopted new behaviors, but I'm pretty confident that we're all gonna return back to the gyms, but most likely not to the offices. I think we're pretty accustomed to working from home now. so. Uh, you know, I'm excited for uh, things returning back to normal fairly quickly. I think the next 12 months will go by pretty quickly and we'll be back to where we were. Thank you, PJ. Last but not least, Ben, could you please let us know what excites you with the next 12 months? Yeah, I guess it's more or less the same as everyone. You know, hopefully in the next six to 12 months, some country may be a little bit short sooner, some country may be a little bit longer, that we can go back to a little bit of normality. You know, I know that we talk a lot about the new normal and all that stuff, but, you know, I'm for one, maybe I'm a little bit older than this younger generation. <laughs> that I think, you know, just like Sam said, you know, human connection is essential to our lives. So no matter how advanced digital and all that, which is nice and great, it can't be replaced. You know, we shut our eyes to go to studio every day just for a quick go and then come back. You know, I, I guess people need to move around, need to see people and all that. And I think it just takes a few months. And, you know, I, I mean, over the past 12 months, we have experienced a close and an open and a close and it opens. And obviously the first month, maybe a little bit of people who are, you know, a little bit more risk taker and all that. But eventually we have seen this cycle of after you open a studio for two months, things back to normal. And I really think that after we have been deprived for, almost two years by then, people will just come back, especially with the vaccination and all, all, everything. I think, you know, and, and we understand the, the, this a little bit better. We know how to protect it better. I think that the confidence of the fear will become, the confidence will be more, the fear will become less and then you vaccine. So I think all of that, you know, we're just gonna bring things more back a little bit to normal. I mean, for us, given that, you know, we also have expand and then push things forward for the digital side. So I think for absolute wise, we are looking forward to bring these two together on certain aspects, on certain area, not every area that we do. So, you know, as I keep mentioning, you know, we would definitely, you know, continue to expand and push our, our studio experience and all that, but at the same time, we are also very excited about our Absolute Cycle Home Edition to, to kind of launch it out and then make it, you know, more available and all that, you know, hopefully before Peloton comes. <laughs> no. Thank you. I keep hearing Peloton throughout this panel and, and like, yeah, they are coming and we're looking forward to see them as well. Uh, but I would like to take this opportunity to thank every one of you for sharing your thoughts, your opinions in this panel. I wish you guys all the best. Thank you so much for joining this panel. Thank you. So we're creating a whole new category of fit 
that uses stackable resistance band technology or what we call our TUT plates to replace bulky home gym equipment or your traditional metal plates. So whether you're doing functional strength training, prehab or rehab, we think there's a tremendous opportunity to change the way people work out from home by offering higher value, better performance and convenience in one solution and up to 250 plus exercises that doesn't force customers to have to go out and choose between multiple pieces of equipment that may or may not meet or address their fitness needs. I'm really excited about the growing team of TUT trainers and our advisors like Carl Bergstrom, the head performance coach for the Golden State Warriors. All of these people have contributed in a meaningful way to create excellent content that we're now sharing with our community. Really excited about the TUT training app that we recently launched. And at the end of the day, we want to impact a billion lives. We want to make fitness products and exercising from home more affordable and more accessible. It's really important to us. The original inspiration for the for the TUT trainer was the inventor was asked by a Navy commander to create a high performance gym uh, in a small footprint and that way they could use that in their vessels, their ships and their submarines. And that was the impetus, that was the inspiration and genesis for TUT trainer. Why we chose uh, resistance bands is we looked at a lot of different types of technology and we considered a lot of different types of exercises. We looked at magnetic resistance exercises. We looked at weight systems. Then we took in consideration types of exercises like eccentric, concentric, explosive exercises. And how do we make the gym portable? And how do we make it lightweight? And in the end, it had to be resistance bands. It had to be our touch plate technology. The cool aspect about our top plates is if you're looking for a little bit more resistance and heavier strength, you can add on or take off depending on how you're feeling that day. So if you wanted to do higher reps, you can do lower resistance with your top plates by just easily taking them off and stacking on for an extra strength. We have a very unique power bar. It's adjustable. So you can use this power bar for compound exercises like bench press, shoulder press, squats. The ideal thing is, is you can use it and you can adjust. So you can do offset bench, offset shoulder press. No one else in the world has anything like it. The swivel feature, we call it the swivel feature, is very unique. Just imagine when you're working out in a gym and you're using a weight stack or a universal gym, you're forced to travel on the track that that gym provides. It doesn't really engage your, your core. Our system swivels. It's more, it's safer if you have an injury, it's better suited for your injury. And also, of course, it really engages your core when it's swiveling like that. So for the first time, you can actually add weight for your upper body and lower body. You could have 60 pounds for your legs and you could have 40 pounds for your shoulders. It's a taxing workout, a very challenging workout. There's two easy ways to install TUT Trainer. One is a permanent way. You install it into the wall. There's two TUT wall plates. You put one on the top, one on the bottom. You screw it into the wall and into the wood studs. The other way is for remote training. You can install it on any standard door frame or any upright secured post. Of course, we're very portable. The gym weighs 11.6 pounds. You can break it down into three pieces. You can actually put it in our tote bag, our gym bag, or you can put it in a medium-sized suitcase. We're very excited about our TUT training app and the options that we're providing for our users. So if they only have a 20 minute period to work out, they can choose between a core workout, a HIIT workout. We have a beach body in case they want to get a little bit more sculpting, ready for their beach, summer bod. Um, and if they want a longer sweaty workout, we're giving them that option as well. We see a great opportunity with partners. We see a great opportunity to partner with them with our stackable resistance band technology. Just walk into any fitness store and you're gonna see universal gyms, weight stack systems. Just imagine our stackable resistance bands replacing those weight stacks, replacing those universal gyms. You're gonna have a much lighter, more efficient gym that is actually portable as well.